Hey everyone, it's Kevin from KankleVintage.com. I wanted to start this video out with a couple of housekeeping items. Um, first thing you might notice is if you go to the about page on my YouTube channel here, you'll notice that I have some information in there now, uh, along with some links, links to my website, a link to a Facebook page, LinkedIn, uh, some things like that. And there's not a whole lot there yet, but I'm working on getting that all populated. I'm gonna to try to, to post uh, more regularly to my website, like the blog that's there. And I'm also going to start putting things on Facebook and LinkedIn and those kinds of things. So um, expect to see things not just be video format from here on out, which sometimes is helpful because I can add some more uh, context about a particular command or something like that. Um, I'm also getting some major website changes done. And one of the things that you're gonna be able to do is request things like a fusion demonstration or a consultation for your problem or even just book me for an hour if you want a little help with a problem that you might have so uh, be on the lookout for on that for both my website and my Facebook page uh, coming up so getting to the video today this is another user uh, requested video so again can't thank you guys enough for that it makes these videos so much better to do things that I know people want to see I've got a lot of other CAD videos coming up as well, um, so I'm probably going to switch up to that for a little bit. Um, some of the things that I had pre-recorded before I asked for the requests. Uh, and again, I still want to get your guys' requests in there, so as you see things that you uh, want to see, please send me an email, leave it in the description, whatever you want to do in the comments, and let me know. The topic of this video is going to be simulation options. and, and uh, how you can you know simulate the tools and show different stock conditions and things like that. This is probably one of the most common things that happens in my training classes is I show something and somebody will say, wait a minute, how'd you do that? How'd you get your tool to go there? So I thought we would take a look at this part and see some of the simulation options available to us. Um, I have a top side and a bottom side program on this. Uh, so let's take a look at this top side and just go ahead. Let's just use this facing operation as the first thing that I wanna demonstrate. So to do our simulation, I'm just gonna highlight the operation in this case, or we could highlight a setup or any combination of operations. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the simulate button. And then now I want to determine what it is that I wanna show. So you can see that this is on the display tab is broken down into three categories, tool, tool path, and stock. I'm gonna leave the stock off for right now, and we're just gonna focus on the tool and the tool path. So you can, I can show everything about the tool I can just show the shaft of the tool or I can just show the cutting flutes of the tool so that's where this first tool option is available now the one that I want to uh, talk more about here in this particular case is the different options for what we can simulate here so I have it on tail which is one of my favorite options let's go switch to all toolpath and with all toolpath what you'll see is it just shows us every part of the toolpath and the toolpath stays in the screen it doesn't disappear so that's one of our options um, Let's take a look at, so what does toolpath before position do? When I play this one, it's going to show the, the toolpath uh, being generated. So we don't see it until the toolpath goes over it. Alternatively, if we do toolpath after position, it erases the toolpath as it goes and plays. So you can see what's coming up after where the tool's at, and it erases where it's already been. And then, like I said, probably we... Uh, I guess we can do toolpath for operation as well. So this one will just show you the toolpath for the operation. It doesn't disappear. It shows everything for that particular operation. Then we have my favorite, the one that I probably use the most, which is tail. And if I hit play, what you'll see is the toolpath displays and then sort of unwinds behind the tool. So you can see the toolpath is chasing the tool as, as it goes. So it, it won't clutter up my screen as much. Uh, if I were to click on this entire top side setup and simulate it, and let's change it all toolpath. You'll see that that starts to look a little bit busy. Um, if I were to change it toolpath before position or after position, of course, that would you know clean it up somewhat. Uh, toolpath just for operation would just show whatever operation it is that I'm on. Um, so when it gets finished with this facing move, it's gonna go to the adaptive and we're gonna see all the toolpath that's available for that adaptive operation. Now you can just see that. But still my favorite is the tail because I get kind of a preview of what the toolpath is doing but then it starts to disappear off the screen and doesn't make things so cluttered. So those are a couple different options that you can do there. Now underneath the toolpath, you'll also see an option called show points. Um, so what I often do in my, in my classes is I will, uh, let's highlight these two operations and go ahead and hit the simulate button. And I'm gonna change this to be all toolpath. 
And what I'll do in a class is I'll say, well, hmm, let's see what a, let's see what a toolpath looks like. And you can see as I move my mouse around, like if I want to see what the toolpath looks like right there, I can click on that spot and Fusion moves the tool to that particular spot. I can generally figure out where the points are, so it's the end point where two where a tool ends or two toolpaths intersect. So those, that's where you're able to go ahead and click on. But to make that even easier, if I turn on the Show Points button, anywhere where there's a black dot now, I can go ahead and click on that point, and Fusion's going to move the mouse to that particular point that I click on. So Show Points will go ahead and do that. Now, Show Points also has kind of another valuable little uh, trick to it. You can see this adaptive operation has an awful lot of code being uh, generated by it. So if I just highlight this adaptive and I hit the simulate button, every place that there's a little black dot is a line of G-code that's going to be generated. So there's going to be a lot of G-code in this file. If I were to go and edit this adaptive operation, and on the Passes tab, let's just turn on Smoothing, just the defaults. And we'll hit OK, and this will take just a minute to calculate. And then we'll go ahead and do a simulation on this toolpath one more time. And let's see if the number of points hasn't changed. Okay, so we got that calculated. I'm going to hit the simulate button. And now you can see that the number of black points in here is far less. So that's another little quick way to see how efficient your code is by turning the points on or off. And having a look and see what Fusion is generating. So th those are some of the mode options there. Now, another thing that we can do, I'm gonna go ahead and close this and just use the facing operation again one more time, is we can also do turn on stock. And I have some different options here. Uh, the first is we can do standard or fast. Uh, I almost always do standard. If we look at the fast, you can read here what it says is significantly faster than standard mode when working with large toolpath that doesn't support three axis indexing, multi-axis toolpaths, undercutting or detection uh, collisions so our collision detections I guess so a lot of times I leave this on on standard and in here we have four different options that I primarily use one is by material the second is by operation by tool or by comparison so if I were to say this by operation and I hit play now I'm only simulating one operation apparently this first operation that I was going to simulate was going to be green and my material is green I think that's a little bit of a uh, no, maybe not. Okay, so we'll hit, we can hit by material as well, and now it won't color the toolpath either. It'll just show the material color. So let's highlight two of these operations and do it by, to, by operation. So let's go simulate, and we'll say by operation. Let's hit play. I'm going to switch my toolpath back to tail to clean things up a little bit. So there's going to be my facing operation, and you can see that color is coming in as green. And now it's about ready to change to the next operation, and let's see what color this ends up being. So now you can see that this tool is showing all the moves that it's doing as blue. And the next tool would choose a different color and so on down the road. So one of my favorite ones is the comparison mode. Let's go ahead and simulate this and let's turn on uh, comparison. And what this is gonna do is anything that's blue is going to be stock that hasn't been finished. Anything that's green is gonna be finished part. So I'm gonna hit the play button and you can see that you can start to see my finished part up here. So that top face of the part is the green finished area. Let's jump ahead. This is just roughing area, so nothing should be green. Now here comes my horizontal. And with this horizontal, you can see that I leave the blue on the walls, because I'm leaving 10 thousandths of a stock on the walls to come back and clean up with a 2D contour operation. So let's get past that to the next operation. So here comes my 2D contour, and now you can see that those walls are all turning green um, because I'm now finishing all the material off. We'll jump to the next operation. This is a 2D contour that just kind of cleans up the outside of the part. Skip a couple more here. This is a parallel operation that just kind of goes up and uh, does a operation that cleans up this sloped face. Let's jump ahead and hopefully, yeah, here. So if we look, hmm, I might have a problem here. You can see it's leaving a little chunk of blue. Let's skip ahead again. It's gonna go to the other side. Again, I leave a little chunk of blue. I can skip forward. We'll skip through some of these operations. So here's a, a spot drill and it's putting a chamfer on the same time. Here's my tap. And that was a drill and then that was the tap. And that finishes up the operation. Now, there was also a 2D chamfer tool path on here, I believe. Yeah, so there it is. Um, and you can see when we look at this, 
that a clue that something has happened is that I can see the bare model edges through my stock. And so a lot of times when I want to do a simulation and get it as accurate as possible, I'll shut off everything in my design so I don't see anything. And now when we look, we can see that actual chamfer and we'll also notice something else. We see a red stripe going through here. The reason for that, red indicates that we're having a collision. And because I didn't model the chamfer on my part, I'm doing it with the chamfer tool. Fusion's letting me know that we have a clash, that the end result that we're getting isn't what we modeled our part to be. So this is what we get in our first operation. Um, now, again, I can clearly see that I've got some areas here of blue that I need to go and work through and fix. So let me just go back to a home view here and we'll turn our model back on. And you might notice that I have four contouring operations. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold my control or command button down, depending on your Windows or Mac, and highlight those operations. That one I didn't suppress. And let's just go ahead and generate those. Oop, not generate, but uh, let's try that again. I meant to unsuppress them. So I'll right click and uncheck the suppress option. And then now that they're unsuppressed, we'll go highlight them. Okay, so now that I've got those added on there, let's go ahead and simulate that one more time. We'll hit play. Now I'm just gonna use my slider to let the simulation run as fast as possible. Um, I could also skip operations, but now this time what we should see is that those little chunks of material that were showing up as blue is now gone because I did a contouring operation that cleaned up that face um, where the 2D contour toolpath couldn't meet where the ball mill was getting. So we got that all cleaned up. Okay, so one more, one more thing that we can kind of show. If I flip this part over, what I've done on this is I've Z'd off the bottom, so my work corner system is located off the hat of the part. So notice that we're touching off on raw stock and we're touching off on the finished face, so we'd have to use the parallels um, for the bottom height. So we face this part off and then we probe aside for the X and we probe aside for the Y and then we drill our holes, um, spotter holes, do a chamfer operation and then drill that hole all the way through. However, here's another little uh, thing we run into a lot. If I simulate this, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play. Let's go ahead and skip to the next operation. So here you can see my, it looks like my probe is crashing, which we don't want to have happen. Um, and when I spot drill these holes, and we'll just go forward and drill these, I have all that material left around the outside of my part and my chamfer operation looks like it's digging through a bunch of material. However, if you remember how I machined this from the top side, um, once we take that hat off, from op one, we would be at all finished part from there. So things aren't quite accurately represented and that's kind of a bummer. Um, however, there's a way we can get around that. And the idea here is I'm gonna hold down my command button or control. I'm gonna highlight my top side and my bottom side and I'm gonna simulate these together. Now I can go ahead and simulate the stock. And I'll just skip ahead really quick to go through some of these. So here comes our parallel ops. Again, we'll just jump through so we don't have to watch the entire side of this play. Now we're going through our tapping operation. So this should happen pretty quick. And then now what you'll see is because I simulated both of the operations at the same time, it carries on from where we left off on the stock simulation. So here we're going to do, I'm doing this in two even step downs to get rid of the hat. So let's uh, go to the next move and let's go to the next move. And so now this one's going to remove the hat at its final size. So we're getting down to that finished uh, part. We have two more passes to go. And now this time let's watch the probe come in and we shouldn't see those red, um, we shouldn't see those red collisions anymore because Fusion knows there's no stock there anymore. So there we go, we have our probe operation come down and probes the other side. We spot drill our holes. We're gonna put our chamfer around. I guess like I'm gonna turn off my model again so we can see that all the way. So now we see our, ch our chamfer operations applied there. We're gonna do a chamfer around the outside of the part. Again, we see that little red stripe going around there and that's okay, we know we're chamfering through our part. Um, so there's my through drill in each of the corners. And when I'm done, now what I'm gonna see is that I have green part everywhere, letting me know that I've fully machined this part um, all the way. So that's a handy way you can simulate multiple operations so you can see your end result.
And maybe the last one I'll throw in, I guess we have a couple more tips to go through. Let's turn our model back on. If I were to simulate this top side, something else we can do, let's just put this on, let's put this as material in ceramic. We can also show our stock as transparent. So when I simulate this, I get a good idea of what my stock looks like and where my finished part is at too and to see what things look like. So uh, let's jump a couple operations through. Let's get past this adaptive and see what it looks like. So there, he, there you can see a really good comparison of what things look like compared to the model. Another super handy tip for when you get in a complicated area um, or you just want to see, I'm just going to simulate one option. Instead of hitting the play button here, I can just hold my left mouse button down and move left or right. And that allows me to quickly and easily drive the tool through its range of motion. So now I'm not playing. So if I were to get something where I'm, I really want to see what's happening in a particular transition, I'm just holding the left mouse button down. I can go forwards or backwards to see what's going on. A um, couple other little th small things in the simulation window is if I go to the info tab, as the simulation happens, we can get the X, Y, Z in real time, what the spindle speed is, what the feed rate is, and what the movement is. So here you can see it's getting in transition. Now it's gonna switch back. Now we're at a finished cutting feed rate. So as we simulate different parts of our, our operation, uh, we can see what the tool is doing. If I were to switch this to all tool path, I can also click on those different points so I can get the X, Y, Z location for that. Uh, I can see what my spindle speed is. I can see what kind of feed rate it is and what kind of movement. So there's all kinds of little options that we have available on the uh, info and statistics tab of the simulation. Uh, so hopefully that helped you guys get a little better with simulations. If there's anything I missed or anything you have questions on, please let me know in the comments below or you can email me at info at mechanicaladvantage.com to let me know something you'd like me to reshow or a question that you might have or a suggestion for a future video. And if you found this helpful, it would be awesome if you guys would hit the subscribe button. Again, thanks for watching and uh, we'll talk to you later.